Away from election-related matters, the Criminal Investigations Department of the Ghana Police Service says the prime suspect charged with the murder of Professor Yal Bene has changed aspects of his confession. This means the police will have to revisit the crime scene to make the necessary adjustments to the case. Director General of the CID, COP Ken Isaac Yebwa, told journalists at a media briefing the motive of the suspect was to rob, but the professor was killed because he resisted. Head of our security desk, Gifty and Rapia has more. Hello, Gifty. Uh, so what exactly did the suspect allegedly take in that robbery attack which ended up in the killing of the professor? Well, uh, Benes, as you have rightly said, the CID tells us that the idea or the motive was to steal, was to essentially rob. What they're telling us was taking away were two mobile phones owned by Professor Bene and a CPU. That's all they're telling us was taken at the crime scene. And then a, a, a wallet that contains 450 cities owned by uh, Professor Bene. So these are some of the things that were taken. But the question we put to the police was, who steals a CPU without the full complement of the computer, which is the, the, the monitor? And they told us that according to what the prime suspect is telling them, he believed that there may have been information, monitoring information, because there are cameras installed in the room, in the house. They believe that there would have been information on that CPU, and that's why he took it and dumped it in a septic tank. Mm. Venice. So um, what else would the police be doing at the crime scene, Gifty? Well, what they're going to do is to go back and try and see if they'll find that CPU, which the prime suspect said he dumped in the uh, septic tank. And also, according to the police, he has confessed that they used uh, an iron rod to hit Professor Bennett on his head, leading to his death. And so they and he threw that iron rod away. The police says they're going to try and find that iron rod, which is the uh, the metal weapon, the alleged metal weapon, mm -hmm. as well as find that uh, CPU. But he has also mentioned another name, according to the Director General of the CID. They're looking to track down this person as well, Dennis. Uh, Gifty, just to, to clarify, this crime, a uh, prime suspect we are talking about is the one who worked as a cleaner in Professor Bennett's James, house. Yes. Okay. Uh, away from the Professor Bennett case, did the CID provide any information on the Western Togoland secessionist case. It, it was one of the key things on the minds of journalists who came, attended this press conference today, because that is, you know, uh, the running story at the moment and the big national threat. Uh, I, and I did ask a question about it, but the uh, Director General indicated that that was not a matter they are able to speak to at the moment. But as and when they have information on that, they will tell us. Benis, I need to add this quickly. Um, I did ask uh, the Director General information that Joy News is picking up, which indicates that Professor Bennett was apparently writing a book and had apparently received some threats. So I asked the Director General if they at least points them to this direction. He said they know about the book. They know Professor Beno was writing a book. He says they have a copy of the book. As to whether or not the book and any threat existed and, and, and has anything at all to do with the death of Professor Bennett, they have yet to establish those fine details. Thank you very much, uh, Gifty and Rapia, with those fine details of a press conference organized by the CID on the killing of law lecturer Professor Yao Bene. You're watching Joy News today with me, Benes Abubedu Lansa. We will bring you the NSMQ update later. And uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, Opokuwari Senior High School beat Wesley Girls and Holy Child to proceed to the next stage of the competition. But shortly, though, we'll bring you business news and that later. <laughs>